Hello everyone, nice to meet you. We are students from diverse disciplines. Uh, we are Mauricio Alclevesma. And we are students of political sciences of Unizapalaca in the Mexico City. Regarding the dynamics that are being lived right now around the fight for life, we consider that it is necessary to organize her. Right now, organization needs to be, has a critical thinking of anti-capitalist organizing because it is from that devouring system that us in Mexico and you there in London, we are struggling right now and we are in direct struggle in the fight for life across communities for the right to water, for the right to resources, and different aspects of the same fight. I don't know if my sibling Alberto would like to say some words as well about what we do and who we are. Good afternoon, everyone, siblings in England. As my comrade has said, we are part of this organization. Uh, we organize principally around the region of Puebla in Mexico. And we are compromised uh, mostly of students from different disciplines. They are both uh, students of political sciences in Itzapalapa. And it is exactly with the front for self-determination that we are creating a united front struggle against the advancement of capitalism in our territories and in our lives but we are only one part of a broad movement of different social organizations that are existing in Mexico across uh, Latin America and frankly, the whole world. And in this case, we are speaking about uh, normal schools, the rural universities in Mexico. And right now, this year, we are celebrating the 100 year uh, found, founding of these schools. They were founded during the period of Lázaro Cárdenas, one of Mexico's presidents. They were founded on um, the principles of socialism and of historic, historical materialism. And we need to contextualize what the normal universities were about. It was about the idea to bring professors into rural zones because it's exactly those areas, the rural areas, that need uh, higher education to be able to develop. And the story of those institutions, educational institutions, is that peasant and rural communities are educated to be able, uh, in that way, to create self-determination in their own territories. But now, exactly because the normal schools were founded on socialist principles, they have been attacked across the whole of the last century, the PRI, one of the parties of Mexico. And they have tried, what the party has tried to do to be able to preserve its power is to criminalize the students of these universities. And there has been a war against this popular educational institution. In 2004, this erupted in the violent disappearance of 43 students in Ayotzinapa. And those compas, those siblings who were forcibly disappeared, different collectives, their mothers, their families, many different movements have contributed to the search for them. But even so, even as the disappearance showed the violent hatred against the socialist principle that these educational institutions represented, 
we still see continued attacks on the institutions and continued attacks on students. And right now, the Mexican state is denying its responsibility around being transparent and clearly speaking to its responsibilities of how it came that these 43 uh, students were forcibly disappeared and taken. Now, there are several alumni from Escuelas Normales, uh, from the normal universities, which should be highlighted right now in the 60s and 70s. Students from the normal universities created their guerrilla uh, nucleus um, in order to bring the inconformity with the state um, and to bring the party of the poorest of society towards struggle and towards guerrilla struggle specifically. Now, these uh, types of organizations led by students are the purest forms of anti-capitalist sentiments. And that is basically the history of this important institution of Mexico summarized. And now my sibling would like to further expand on the other processes, contemporary processes of student organization that are taking place right now. We extend our solidarity towards your cause, towards your movement, your student movement there in SOAS in England. Um, because you are also furthering the opposition um, to anti of anti-capitalism. Now, that's here, like what we had to say. Thank you very much for your attention and for any questions that you may have. Um, please uh, let us know how we can keep in touch, uh, to stay in touch with you. Um, if you would like to write to us, we can also share our email as well. To stay in touch and continue to strengthen the experience that you are building in your territory, the legitimate process uh, of student revolution. And solidar we extend our solidarity with the cause that you are furthering there. Because right now, public, free, accessible education is the universal cause right now. And we can further that together. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. El compañero lo va a explicar otra vez. Perdón. Sorry, but What I just said was the capitalist system, especially of the United States, it is designed for them to be perpetually at war forever to maintain their global hegemony. So they claim that countries like, you know, from the global south, should contribute to climate change but then they are the ones who have to take the first steps by diverting sufficient resources to countries in the global south to address the universal problems but then the resources which they are diverting it's all to war to just maintain their hegemony if like if the war in Ru in russia was ukraine war if that wasn't enough then they are telling people to be prepared for another war with china so then when you have people constantly preparing, you know, the, their populations for war, I think these systems, they cannot be addressed, which is why you have seen the global south resenting a lot of what their policies are. And the rise of the global south is inevitable. And someday we will have our voices heard. Yo. Bien, gracias. <clears throat> Muchas gracias. Un saludo también desde México. A la Thank you very much. And we say hi from Mexico. Uh, to our compass in India, um, from Latin America and America, uh, and from the global south, really. We also comprehend what you were talking about through the concept of neocolonialism, of the imperialist uh, powers constituted as such as hegemony, uh, cre are creating right now a cold war where they are trying to implicate the majority of the world into their senseless wars and their senseless bloodshed. 
we see that we can no longer depend on their actions. We can no longer depend on what they choose or do not choose to engage us in. We cannot place our futures in their hands. And even, and even as we make them responsible, we cannot expect them to create the solutions that we will need. Through our funds and through our organizations, we try to create these processes of self-determination so that we must not depend on the powers that oppress us and control our economies and our resources. We cannot depend on them to liberate us. That is why we take that leadership from the concepts of the Zapatismo that the revolution must come from below. Because in that way, the imperialist wars, we see that they are done only between powers. Well, they have no control over us. We are not, we are no longer in the situation where we are fighting bad against evil. What we are really fighting is the majority of us at the bottom against everyone. Therefore, we are not even, because right now, the elite and dominant class has never considered the majority of us as human. And that is why from below, from our territories, that is where the need to organize is born. And this is why we organize our own revolutionary processes in Latin America and also um, the global South. Now, just to complement what the sibling was saying, unfortunately, the Global South, because of the geographic uh, symbolism as well, we, we pay the price, what the powers choose to do. Now, those two projects of civilization are now um, clashing um, in pro that this new Cold War is the idea of which civilization the global South is. But truly, what we must align ourselves with is fights from below, the struggles from below, because that is the project. Because those projects of domination of a new Cold War that must not impact what we are building. And in that sense, we need to build consciousness and create uh, new learning around those new dynamics. And we really do see the possibility of a, a further war and suffer the consequences of lack of resources, systemic, structural, and economic violence. Now, those projects of domination globally are going to end at some point. And importantly, they are going to also impact our ability to be together, uh, be social with each other as well. Now, the extractivist predation against what is called the third world, um, that is what we're seeing that all of those wars are built on. Thank you, everyone. I'll translate quickly. Hola, hola, compas. Soy Cobra, soy acá y trabajo con mis comunidades allá en, en, en África, en el oeste de África, especialmente, donde trabajo con los jóvenes que están organizando allá por su autodeterminación. Y tengo como una propuesta, tanto como una pregunta. Es que primero, ¿cómo es? ¿Cómo es que ustedes um, organizan sobre su, la educación en tu movimiento? Así, ¿cómo se tratan como la educación adentro de tu frente, por ejemplo? ¿Y cómo, cómo organizan sobre esto? ¿Y cómo integras esto en, tu, en sus procesos de organizar? ¿Y también cuántos son? ¿Y cómo manejan tus, como, tus, tus capacidades? Es decir, como... I'm trying to say, like, 
how many are you and how like you know are you regionally like located? Are you regionally related? Yeah. Uh like um Sí, ¿cuántos, ¿cuántos son y, y si organizan regionalmente? Es decir, como en diferentes zonas vinculadas, ¿no? es decir. Gracias. Bro, can I just, can I just so, jump to so everyone that is going to speak to please be very, very slow? Ah. Sí. Sí. But that was in English, it's funny. So, that was just first, I was just asking. So, say it again, because the people in Edinburgh just say in English. Okay, okay, so for the family in, in, in Edinburgh, the question was, how do you approach study in your movement? Um, and how many are you and how do you organize in your different regions or locations? Así eso fue la pregunta y la traducción para ellos. Gracias, compas. Muchas gracias, compañero. Igual, respondiendo a la pregunta, en este sentido, pues hay que... Now answering the question, we need to contextualize. Before we were students here, we also come from communities themselves. And here in Mexico, those communities are called originary communities. We are peoples who have been in Mexico since before Mexico was called Mexico, before the conquest, before the arrival of the Spaniards, before the colonization. We already existed and we were already a people. We already had our own modes of education. And in that way, we have never lost. We have never lost those forms of organizing ourselves and learning together. We know those things in Mexico as um, usages and customs. We know, that, therefore, that our popular organization is rooted in those cultures. Organization isn't born with us or with our parents. Very tech. Organization comes truly from our grandfathers and our great great grandfathers who actually resisted the conquest and consisted the plunder, who continue to resist right now. And they continue to resist uh, the new models of destruction. So our organization is rooted in our peoplehood as people because we already know them, basically. In our territories, we don't need to build those bases because those bases have already been built from generations. And we, will, we were born there, we live like that, and we will die like that. So that is a great advantage that we have in terms of how we organize and how, exactly what it is that we organize around. Now, really the question is, now what is next? That is the most important question for us. Now we have the basis, we don't need to build those. Now what do we do? And exactly it is with that, with the educational proposal, that is, as students, we see it as necessary to develop not only the practice, but also the theory. We understand the world. We understand the world and the political model as a chessboard, but truly they are the ones setting the rules. So with their rules, we will never be able to win. So when they need, for a horse to go in a straight line, then, or the other way around. So us as students of political sciences, we see it as necessary to be able to bring down uh, political theories for our communities to take it as their own. Because those rights of communities of determination are safeguarded within our own constitutions. And in that way, we have also developed a proposal from the Frente. Actually, he has a question first. Where are we now? Where are we now as an organization? Right now, we are in the city of Mexico. 
en Puebla. Pero, eh, que hemos haciendo, hemos But thanks to the work that we have been developing, we have managed to create uh, units, squads, in Morelos, in Oaxaca, in Jalisco, in three different states of Mexico, of the Republic. So that is how we have tried to develop the creation of what they call cells, to create even as nucleus that might be dispersed, that are still unified in vision. Now, the proposal that we have developed in the front is that we need educational institutions in our own territories and in general. Something that has happened in Mexico is that the official narrative from the state changes the narrative that is coming from the people. It changes the narrative that comes from the indigenous people and the different social movements. So that is why we see it and are compelled to follow the path of self-determination. Self-determination does not only imply uh, to self-govern, but also to self-educate, to control new technologies for ourselves, by ourselves. And that is a proposal that we are developing here in Mexico, in our territories. Thank you very much, everyone. Sí, muchas gracias por por explicarlo, entender cómo funciona y para pensar mucho más en cómo la estrategia y la fase en donde están. Um, sí, gracias por su trabajo y hay muchas conversaciones conversaciones que tenemos que continuar siguiendo con esta propuesta y pensando en cómo Sí, es conectar y vincular más los procesos de base. Pues mucha fuerza a ustedes. I'll just say a big love. That was cold. Now, uh, yeah, Kovanez is thanking the compass uh, for what they were saying. Uh, and uh, yeah, saying that it is important that we interconnect and that we interlink uh, the different processes that we are taking forward. Okay. Okay. Hola. Espero que puedas entenderme. Um, Aquí, uh, en primero vers, uh, muchas gracias para tus palabras, para la tercera vez. <laughs> um, quiero, I want to ask um, how you uh, organize your communities. You said you have many communities involved. It must be a very big network. And I just am I'm very interested in how you gather the support and how you uh, reach so many people in big and small communities, especially in London. This is a big problem where community is lacking. So yeah, just about how you build your networks and support systems. Thank you. Perdón, la pregunta es para nosotros, sí, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Ok. Eh, bueno, en ese sentido, lo que nosotros, que eh, la ventaja, como les digo, la ventaja que existe so en México. The advantage, México, as we have spoken before, the advantage that exists in Mexico and in this territory is that because we are uh, people who are native to our ordinary peoples, our indigenous peoples, we no longer see the necessity um, of explaining and doing outreach or even express what our demands are because. The community already knows this. All indigenous people and originary peoples, the demands are the same. Uh, Maria, who does, yeah, different kinds of people have the same demands, uh, specifically around food sovereignty, for example, because the problems are the same. So we know in our process, we are not at that, that stage of doing outreach, building a base. Now, truly, the question is to organize the base that already exists. Now, here, because we are in Mexico City as well, is that we have that advantage. Now, we are, because we are in Mexico City, we are able to move between different nucleus. And there we are able to develop and share uh, the propaganda and the study material. 
Now that is why we are building and developing right now uh, a newspaper. Because through that newspaper, we are able to articulate the different demands that are coming from the regions. Because the demands of Puebla might not be the exact same, for example, from communities that are in Oaxaca, communities that are in Pueblo, communities that are in the city. The demands might be slightly different. So the idea is for people to share um, the problems so that we can also share the solutions. Even as they are dislocated, they are unified. Thank you. For example, in Puebla, we are developing, as we have already spoken about, uh, we are developing the idea of a political formation school. I think there are tech issues. Give us a second. So yeah, so the School of Political Formation is responding to the necessity of the community. The, right now, what the community needs is that there is a lack of proper information. That is why we are developing those proposals. We're also developing the proposal of creating a community food bank. Because the public and normal school The food needs to be high quality and accessible because all the members of the community should be able to access healthy food, which is also nutritious and part of our own um, so that we can continue. From, from the people that work in the field to the people that work in factories, but also to the people that study that is what we are developing, food that is accessible for all different kinds of groups. So yeah, as I said, and as a summary, it doesn't, for us, we don't have the necessity to build that power base in the way that you might be needing to do that in other geographies. Now, the compañera Mar, um, she was with her um, here, she was with us here in Mexico, and she knows, uh, frankly, how we organize and exactly what it is that we organize around. And especially, for example, um, the movement around self-determination, it, it wasn't born from the taking of the Bonafont plan in Puebla. Generations um, of organizations and organizers and families. For example, even in our own families, there are people who were part of the grassroots basis of many of those movements that were active, even just also part of the movement of internationalist students in Nicaragua. Some of our grandparents were part of that as well. And that is some of the advantages that we have here in this territory. And now, even talking more about the advantages that we have as a generation is the tool of social media. Because we see that the technologies, uh, those kind of technologies should be um, available to our peoples as well. Because even the different um, partners that we have and nucleus that we have across Oaxaca, Jalisco, that organization, we are articulating ourselves through digital means as well to keep, continue to build our common struggle. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so yeah, that, so thank you. That's an example of hearing from our compass in Mexico, um, and you know, learning about how you know, they're talking about community education, being living in community. Um, so I'm going to share on behalf of um, Sister Akofa, um, who is the principal coordinator of Abla de Nuyanza, which is an indigenous um, grassroots education initiative in the Betoa region, in the Betoa nation, indigenous people of Ghana in East Africa, it is. So, lower. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. 
the the Betowo people are a community that inhabit the eastern region of Ghana, on the Ghana Togo border. Um, a border that was drawn in a straight line um, during the Berlin Conference of 1884, which reflects still one of the biggest Mangamizi crimes that has harmed that community. Um, and so the indigenous Betowo people still live, live on either side of that border. Now, the natural state of resistance does mean that communities tend to challenge and ignore this border on a regular basis, but there is also violent repression for that same um, fact. And a lot of this contestation is, comes from you know, the top-down government um, seeking to impose um, you know, nationality, borders, and passports on them in having to sort of travel and navigate their lands and their spaces. This has also been a serious issue in contributing to um, some governments being really um, supportive of mining concessions in the Volta region, um, which is one of the few, fewer still kind of quite untouched locations of Ghana. And at the same time, um, this is a region that is also um, very rich in gold, um, as well as like, um, so it's like rich, rich farmlands, which are kind of untouched. So these are being cleared also for deforestation. So Aberdeen Unyansa is, a, is an indigenous education process that is basically about reconnecting to all of these, um, a bit like our compass said, to reconnect to the bases that already exist within community as lifelong learning spaces, such as through where there is dance, um, where there are community cooperatives in farming, and using that to re-restitute um, confidence and pride in indigenous forms of organizing. Because of the colonial pressure, a lot of it still means that a lot of people still are leaving the region in order to go to the Accra, which is on the central, which is in the center, it's a city center, um, and in doing so are um, joining a, an urban population and, you know, largely this is through sort of like certain types of jobs um, that are being offered um, and a so-called interest or a increase in the, no, this, this illusion of a better life. Um, so Abilene has come under a lot of like um, threat and supervision from the state, largely because it's very insistent on keeping people organized within their localities, strengthening indigenous community centers, um, supporting the chiefs to actually rebuild and offer full employment and social enterprise for young people, and do so in link with communities on other sides of the border and in other parts of um, Togo. Um, where they speak the same language, which is Ewe, um, and in the and yeah, and in and in the Betoa region. Um, so most of that education happens through community gatherings, which are regular. Um, but now there's more of an emphasis on really education for that is that addresses a longer history because a lot of the historical institutions um, and people that gen tend to share that information have been either persecuted or are hidden. And in doing so, trying to actually restitute um, the role of indigenous chiefs and leaders to actually be providers of information and preservers of knowledge and wisdom. And, then, and through this, trying to empower young people to actually make the changes and stand up through their understanding of law, um, international law, to stand up to, to violence in the community. Um, I wanted to link this just in, in question to um, another a very similar process, which is about the restitution of indigenous um, institution, which are called the Safo companies. Now, the Safo companies were the original youth scouting companies or, or, or initiatives um, of people in, of, well, largely of the Akans, um, an indigenous group in Ghana. But that um, institution really got popularized and spread through other indigenous formations throughout Ghana. So it's, it's very typical that even in other places like in the Betoa region, they actually study from the Akan Safa companies. They all have Safa companies, which were, you know, your fire service, your, your health service. Um, so that scouting system is now being popularized um, as an education initiative called Akwan Srafo Nimdie. This is in um, Esikado in the sort of Cape Coast Central region and organizes in a very similar way around um, local squad formations and units that work in their communities to popularize education and try and bring 
bit that has gone by saying, like a nucleus that is embedded where communities basically actually literally dictate um, certain roles that are needed of in their society. So that when students or young people go off into education institutions, they are developing a specific role and actually trained in the accountabilities of the communities. Um, I finished there because connected in part to that is what we, is when we take this space here um, in SOAS as a global act of planet repairs, we also mean to find a way in which it should be the fact that we get to a point that people walking through these institutions are actually, rather than being examined in an exam right at the end of the year, are actually putting their services in the service of communities and you're trained and tested on how well you're doing and actually building communities of regeneration. Um, and this is a way, a method of promoting how we could actually rethink what education is, which is a, which is a, a big discussion that's happening right now. Um, and for actually more information about a chief working on this process on Wednesday, um, they will also be, um, we'll be hearing from Nana Kobina about what that process looks like in the Akan region and the challenges and also the violence that is being faced by actually the indigenous leadership um, for daring to state and reassert their initial practices. Um, so this is another way that basically communities are, are, are organizing for self-determination, largely under principles of very like under non-visibilized or like um, institutions of community education, dance, um, food, um, land training in particular, and now more and more is the need for legal tra training and legal support um, in the realms of like land defense and land defense. So um, that's the popular education and two popular education initiatives, Abel Denu Nyansa and Quantra um, from India. And I also give our apologies to our sister Kofa, who's too busy really working right now and is unable to share with us today, but is leading that process. Um, so thank you very much. I'm going to speak in English so that everyone understands me here um, and the compass there, they have translation. So, um, blessing family. Um, so, a bit we just wanted to share um, to you guys also a bit like why it is that we're here um, and why it is that, that the compass in the, I don't know if you can see the screen, but they're in Scotland and they've also occupied a theatre um, in their university. Um, up there in Edinburgh um, and the reason why we're here is because all these institutions the reason why that we are here is because all of these institutions that say that they are working for our communities that say they are decolonial that have us going into lectures, talking about climate change, you know, talking about, um, you know, the, the underdevelopment of our continents, um, the destruction of our lands and waters, talk about these things as though they're in a vacuum, um, as though they are theoretical problems that are happening in our communities, rather than concrete realities. And so as students globally, what we are saying is that these institutions should be at service of our communities. And that's why your sharing of um, what the escuelas normales um, are doing, you know, those examples in Mexico of liberated education spaces education spaces that are working to actually build our people's power in order to, you know, build uh, our self-determination and our sovereignty um, as a people is so fundamental because right now we are coming out of these institutions and are being basically crafted into becoming desk killers you know, people that will be funneled into or NGOs or government positions or, you know, part of even on the, you know, these climate teams of these extractivist companies, you know. And the fact is, is that those 
positions are committing genocide and ecocide on our communities. You know, our communities right now globally are actually fighting to take back their lands. And, and the converts here have given a really strong um, message and an example of that, you know. But the problem is, is that as they're saying, you know, they're repressing our people. You know, they've killed, they, they disappeared 43 students in Mexico because they are students that are learning for liberation, you know? And no one here talks about their names. No, no one here is defending them. In Puebla, we know that they also touched the students from Tetelas, which is another teacher training school. Now, here we don't hear about these things. We don't hear about the names of our people or any of those liberation fighters until they're dead and they're criminalized. So how is it that as we have these calls and we're able to exchange you know, these words and, and actually share about our different concrete reality, how can we begin to actually build that global force that is, that is learning about what we're doing, you know, learning about our processes of building self-determination, of defending our, our rights to sovereignty and building that global power that will say globally, you know, we will, if you touch one, you touch all. And for a long time, they've tried to dismember that, you know, there used to be more of that global power, but they've been dismembering it. So now it won't fall out of the sky. And so that's why we're here today, to learn about our processes of, of education, of, of education for liberation, um, and also challenge ourselves as students, because on all sides of this call, we're students. Um, to actually think about how do we make these universities work in the benefit of us, you know, our communities locally, because our communities here locally don't have access to these spaces. The majority of people don't even have access to any buildings, you know, so how is it we can liberate some of the space in here for the communities here locally, but also for our communities internationally, which they have wrecked havoc on and over which you know they were built you know on the blood of our people they were built so now it's it's talking about you know fueling that repair but not in language and false promises but rather in the concrete actions so that's why we're here and we're grateful for this conversation um it's always really important to hear from siblings elsewhere because that's when people here will actually start to see we have to move differently you know because when they hear well, students are on in Mexico, I'm going to be real compass, you know, a lot of people here, they're walking around and they're just looking for vibes, you know, they're just looking to have a good time, you know, they don't care about organizing because they don't see this a question of life and death. We know that our communities globally don't have that privilege. And it's, it's important to hear what you're doing because it, it's confronting these false realities that these people here have, you know, it's confronting these, these fantasies that they have that they can just walk around joke around but that actually makes them complicit in the criminality you know so i thank you for bringing that perspective um and and for your words because they need to see your power to realize that they're on fuckeries um to be honest so love family um we're gonna keep talking and I'll, if anyone's got any thoughts um on on liberating education on on anything on what these converse have been talking about feel free this is your mic this is our, our conversation when uh like for other people for you in mexico talking about this it's not the abstract it's much more right in your face life and death and for us here i think it's really important to hear about international struggles because otherwise it's so abstract and hard to imagine and like having conversations where we can um, really build that solidarity it is a slow process, but one that we need to keep on doing it a lot. So thank you for telling us your story. Um, I wanted to ask, what do you think, um, you know, people internationally can do to show solidarity, to build networks? You know, how could like students in London help other than these conversations? You know, what what is a moment where you might need help across the Atlantic? 
nosotros vemos también otra cosa sumamente importante. Very important here in Mexico, especially to, to the student develop the false idea that they are part of a different class who they are. As their students, they're not part of the proletariat, and they're not part of the big uh, working classes or the big classes. Therefore, we truly do see ourselves as what we are, because we are peasants, we are children of peasants. Our demands are focused on that. Our, our demands are focused around the uh, development of our class, our peasant class. That is why we truly ground ourselves in where we come from, in our family. This is why normal uh, education, like the institutional educations that we're part of. We have our own uh, political institution of representation of the, therefore, as students are able to politically organize ourselves, not only as students, but importantly, as students. Whoever is a student, uh, where in whatever part of the world needs to assume themselves and understand themselves as, 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 as part of our class. And, and it is only through that that they can become a revolutionary agent. Now with the question of what we can do together in this type of organizations where we are geographically apart, now we believe that our struggle must be anti-capitalist, anti-monopoly, and overall anti-imperialist. By creating these links that we are publishing right now, we need to strengthen these bonds of coming together as students from different nationalities, but not other classes. We are the same class. We are the same class, all of us here together. And that's what we see is really important to emphasize. Whatever, whatever work that we establish must be with this class consciousness in a way that is cultural as well. Now, regarding the proposal that might be developed from today, we see it as entirely important that we continue to participate, you with us, us with you, so that we can see the message to imperialism that even as capitalism is international, class struggle is international as well. And the revolutionary emancipation struggle that we are driving here, happening international. The revolution is not the relevant, which is why at every moment we must see ourselves as internationalists because the proletarian revolution must be international as well. Now that is what we have to contribute for now. And the answer that we have for the compañera right now May the international, the internationalist revolution, class consciousness, we must have a very strong anti capitalist stance that is anti capitalism, anti monopolist in our anti imperialism. That's all. Thank you. Hola, compas. Oye, el, el compañero um, de, de, que habló antes de la India, él me estaba preguntando si si podían dar su opinión también sobre AMLO, porque aquí pues han hablado mucho que él es de izquierda y que a lo mejor es bueno, pero no saben muy bien um, qué es lo que ustedes piensan. Entonces quería, quería escuchar de ustedes con esta opinión. Pues con respecto a Andrés Manuel López Obrador, nosotros con tenemos... Con respecto a Andrés Manuel López Obrador, AMLO, really doesn't represent the true left. He does not have the posture of what we would consider a revolutionary left. The person who, with a discourse, 
reconciliation with the master also arrives at a time in Mexico when we are in heightened um, state in AMLO that is about so that all of those social justice leave somewhere. And they is making the simulation of giving concessions to the press through what, what he is doing. That they are substituting one political elite for another political elite. So to repeat, we do not see AMLO as a, as a viable way of change. He is an escape ball of social discontent, of social pressure that is building up concretely in Mexico right now. AMLO, with, by conciliation, is an escape ball of discontent. We do not agree with the policies of Andrés Manuel López Obrador, AMLO, because what we see in him is a reformist. Discourses that might allude to values, working classes. So truly, what they are doing is effectively substituting one political elite for another political elite to continue the domestication of the working classes. Right now, the political elite currently has hinges of more nationalist um, discourses, which can also be dangerous in some cases. But we do not believe for that to be um, the way forward. We do not believe for that to be the way towards change. However, different opinions will obviously differ. It is a very polarizing um, con contingent that we face. There are some other people who might not agree with what we think, uh, but yet we stand our ground and say that is not the way to change. That is not a revolutionary way, it is a reformist way. Uh, because what he is trying to build is to build, to lower the discontent so a new uh, bourgeoisie uh, of national tinge can be built. Bueno, gracias, compas, um, por, por entrar a la, a la reunión, por compartir todo. Um, y, y pues, gracias desde acá les, les mandamos pues un abrazo combativo, solidario, como siempre. Um, y aquí andamos y pues vamos a seguir tejiendo, seguir Gracias. hablando, viendo cómo... Pero bueno, la lucha sigue y, y así. Adelante. The struggle um, continues. We move forward. Muchas gracias, compañeras, compañeros. Eh, eh, desde cualquier geografía que nos saluden. Nosotros estamos muy emocionados por el proceso, por este proceso que están desarrollando ustedes en su territorio. Estamos muy emocionados también de poder compartir con ustedes, que nos compartan a la vez lo que están haciendo ya en sus territorios, pues. Eh, les enviamos un abrazo grandísimo desde Puebla, desde la Ciudad de México. Y pues nada, decirles que seguimos pues al pendiente de ustedes y que para cualquier acción y propuesta que ustedes tengan, cuenten con nosotros para sumarnos, apoyarnos, y que sin importar qué, pues vamos a respaldar cualquier lucha que sea anticapitalista. For any that you will continue to develop that is anti-imperialist, that has revolutionary class that we are developing right now. <laughs>